Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode I'm going to be going in a little bit more detail on editing, on using some uh, technique in editing once you have an edit down, a basic assembly down inside your timeline. Uh, the previous episode, episode 38, I went over the assembly editing, just kind of doing a quick assemble, and I wasn't too worried about getting things matched up. I was just kind of getting the, uh, the rough edit down into my timeline and to get all the shots in kind of sequence to tell the story that I'm going to be telling. So let's take a quick look at this. This is a fight scene I've been working on here. Sauna. Got the lady that stands up. You notice like right there we got a mismatch where she lifts the gun once and it uh, lifts the gun here and then she lifts it, finishes lifting, lifting it here. So we have a, a continuity issue there. Uh, there's a few continuity issues in here. Like right there, he turns his head twice. And like I said, when I did the assembly edit, I was just throwing uh, the footage in because kind of the basic shots that I needed in here and wasn't worrying about timing. Uh, so now we're going to work on the continuity and do some fine-tune editing inside of our timeline here. Um, so there's another mismatch there. And there's some of these things where it seems to dwell on maybe the character a little too long. Uh, so we're going to trim these up and kind of clean them up. All right, so first of all, uh, after I've done my assembly, I like to work in the editing window. It gives you a little bit more timeline space to work out of. In fact, I can kind of just squish this over a little bit because uh, right now I've kind of I've already gone through the footage and I got a basic editing edit for the scene here uh, so now I'm just going to kind of fine tune it and trim it and get it all cleaned up here First of all, if you want your standard track height, you just hit Shift Plus. Shift Plus will take your track to a standard track height. If you want a little bit higher track height, I'm going to move my mouse over this blank area right there. Hold down Alt and scroll up or Option on a Mac. Over, move over the sound here and do the same thing. Move that up. A couple different ways of cleaning, of uh, trimming here. So if I want to trim this down here, uh, there's like about three or four different ways we can do this. I'm going to show you all, all the different ways so you can choose which way is best for you. Uh, first of all, I'm on my arrow tool here. That is my trim tool and it's also called, this is also called the uh, selection tool but it also trims. I'm going to go to the edge of this clip here and I'm going to trim it over to the, uh, to the left. Uh, until it locks to my playhead right there. And I've trimmed that down, now we've got this gap here. I can select that gap by hitting D, the letter D as in uh, uh, dumb. And uh, that will select, wherever your playhead is, it will select either a clip or that space, and I can just hit delete, and it deletes and fills the gap. And now as I move through this, she's lifting her gun. I'm just going through arrow. So now let's see if that matches a little better. I'm gonna go back a little bit. And that matches a little bit, but it still needs a little bit of matching, but that, that's one way of doing that. So I'm going to undo, Control-Z, Control-Z, and show you another way of doing that. Another way of doing that would be the ripple edit. The ripple edit is over here on the toolbar, and the shortcut for that is the letter B. B, and now if I move my mouse down here, you notice instead of that red arrow to the left or to the right, it gives me a yellow arrow. Uh, so I'm going to get this once again to where I want to cut off. Let's say right about there when she's lifting up the gun. We'll see if that matches. I'm going to bring my mouse over and click on this clip here, and I'm going to drag it to the left. And what the ripple tool does, the same thing as a trim tool, but it fills the gap for me. So it basically shrunk that uh, out point there, left the endpoint alone, and then filled the gap for me. And that's what the ripple tool does. So as we play through that, that matches a lot better there. So, All right, I'm going to undo that and show you an, e an even easier way than that. Now keep in mind the ripple tool uh, will ripple either this clip's out point or this clip's in point. So, and it will not only just shrink it, but it will also extend it. Say we want to extend this shot. I'm going to grab and drag this to the right, and it extends it, and then shoves everything else down. So it will change the in point or an out point of a clip while leaving the adjacent cl uh, clip's in point or out point alone, and then it fills the gap or it compensates by pushing everything else down the timeline. So uh, I went back to my selection tool, hit the letter V as in Victor uh, to go back to the selection tool, and I'm going to move my mouse back to where I want to trim this. So let's say I want to trim it right there, I want to trim off that many frames here. Now the quickest way of doing that, rather than the previous two methods that I just showed you, is to hit the letter W. And it's done. One little letter there. Uh, I'm going to undo. What that basically does is the letter W, Q and W will, will do a ripple edit uh, either to the right or to the left. Q does it to the left, W does it to the right. They're right next to each other. Q is left and W is right. So W actually did all those steps for me. Q just cleaned everything to the right up to this edit point. And it did a ripple edit for me and it filled the space in. So that's the quick way of doing it. Really easy, Q and W. Same here, say we want to clean off a couple frames, maybe like right there, just like, uh, I'm gonna zoom up here, plus plus on my keyboard. Let's say I want to clean off these few frames here to the uh, to the uh, left, that would be Q. W does it to the right. If I do W, watch this, it'll clean all this. See, and it shortened that, got that clip way short. Undo that. If I hit Q, it will clean off these few frames to the, to the left. And there we go. And it did a ripple edit for me. So let's play through that, see how it looks. Looks good. The matching looks looks good. So now we can play th through this. Let's go to the next clip that we have a mismatch on. Right here he turns his head, so I, I don't want him to turn his head here. I want the click noise first. 
she does a <laughs> click to alert him that can be cleaned up in sound and be replaced with an actual gun click. But say we want to clean off this and have him turn his head on the next, on, on the close-up there. Uh, so I'm going to do W to clean to the right. And I'm going to move in, and he turns his head. And let's say I want to cut before he moves. So right there he moves, and he moves again. Right now I'm hitting arrow right and left to go through one frame at a time. But here I'm going to, before he moves, I'm going to get it right there and hit W. And here, now he moves because his head's already turned. We've got a match there, and the gun goes off and shoots and misses him. So let's play through that little sequence. Click. And see this end right here, I want a little bit more delay. As it cuts from this shot to this, I want a little bit more delay before he starts moving. So I can uh, arrow up. Now to restore that, the Q and W just cuts off. So now I need to restore that. And the way we're going to restore that is with a ripple edit. So I'm going to hit B for my the letter B for my ripple edit. That's a shortcut to grab it. Or you can go click on it right here. But the letter B, as in Bobby, we'll select that. And I'm going to grab this and trim it to the left a little bit and do a ripple edit. I'm going to extend this clip's in point. So I'm going to grab onto this and drag to the left. And it brings up two different windows. This is kind of cool. It brings up two different windows to show you this, the frame to the left up here. Uh, it represents the out point of your adjacent clip, the clip to the left. And the uh, and the frame to the right represents your uh, your end point. And the only thing you're going to be seeing moving here is my clip's end point because this ripple edit will change this clip's end point but not the other clip's out point. So as I move this, look what I can do. See, I can move that back and forth and see where I want my new endpoint to be. I'm going to drag it to the left and get it to where his head just barely finishes turning right there. And let go. And that's a, that's a match in continuity there. And let go. And I have added a couple frames there. So now there's like a couple more frames before he jumps out of the way. So let's play through that. There we go. So that's a little bit longer. I like that more. It works a little better. And let's say right here, when she comes around the couch, I want her to be a little closer. So same thing. I can ripple at it or I can just hit Q. All right, one more thing I'm going to show on kind of this little, on, on this step of editing here. So let's show how, it will, first of all, if you want to remove a shot, and then also if you want to add a shot. I'm going to remove this shot. I do want this one, but I'm going to remove it just for the sake of showing you how to remove a shot. Let's say we don't want this shot anymore. I'm going to select that clip there. Uh, and the way you select a clip, by the way, I'm going to hit Control-Shift-A. Control-Shift-A will deselect everything on the timeline. But let's say I want to select that clip right there and delete it. Uh, D will select that. I can click on it with my mouse like this. Control shift A to deselect. Uh, now I can do D will select right where my playhead is. So kind of convenient way of selecting without having to do it with your mouse. Now to delete that, uh, I can do this. I can just hit the delete on my keyboard and there's a gap there. I can hit D to select the gap and then delete to delete the gap. But there's an easier way of doing that. I'm going to hit D to, to select the clip and then shift delete will actually do both those steps for us. It will, do, it will do a ripple delete where it deletes a clip and fills the gap. So shift delete not backspace, but delete, we'll delete that. Okay, now let's say I really did want to use that clip, so I, let's say we want to insert a clip in between there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the clip I want to insert, and I've already got the endpoints in here, the in and out point I want right here. But let's say you can go through the clip, set an in and out point, hit I and O. So let, let, let's, let's set just a slightly different endpoint here. If I hit I for endpoint, it just set my, my new endpoint. Let's actually shorten that up a little bit, right about there. Endpoint and my out point right there. O for out point. And now if I want to insert that in between here, you got to make sure that your playhead is exactly where you want it, not one frame off or it will cut a frame, just one frame in, and leave that one frame in. So, so here my timeline, to jump to your timeline, it's shift three. Shift three, I'm in my timeline. And I'm going to make sure my playhead is exactly where I want to insert. So here I'm putting plus a couple times to zoom up. Now if you use arrows up and down, it will land on an edit. Um, up will go to the left, uh, down will go to the right. So I'm going to go up, I'm going to hit uh, my arrow. Right, right now I need to be right here, so I'm going to hit my down arrow one time. It'll jump to that edit, and there I want to insert it. If I hit the typical shortcut period, it will uh, overwrite my clip. So if I hit period, know how, does it, how it just ate into that clip and, uh, and destroyed my clip. But I don't want to do that. I want to insert it. So I hit undo, control Z, and comma is insert. Period is overwrite comma is insert. So if I hit comma on my keyboard, it inserts and shoves everything else down. All right, a couple of little features here for kind of rearranging clips and trimming things inside your timeline here. Let's say we want to swap some clips. There's a couple different ways of doing that. Uh, first of all, if it's a clip that's like really close to, if, if you got two clips that are like right next to each other, very close within the same kind of visual area, uh, you can do that uh, via shortcut on your keyboard by grabbing a clip. I'm going to grab this clip. I'm going to drag it over the left. Let's say I want to take this clip and I want to put it right before this one for some reason right there. So I'm going to grab this clip. I'm going to start dragging it over. If I move it over here, and by the way, uh, my magnet is clicked 
clicked right here, which means that it's going to lock to, it's going to magnetize to the edit, or snap to the to the edits. So let me undo that. So if I grab this and I drag it over, notice how as I get this close to that edit point, it suddenly snaps to the edit point right there, putting it exactly on that frame. If I let go, it just eats over everything in its path and just deleted it, everything in its path right there. So I'm going to undo. Let's say I want to uh, place it there. Uh, I'm going to grab this, I'm going to drag it over, get it into the place that I want to, and then I can hold down Control on a PC, Command on a Mac, and it brings up these little these little arrows pointing to the right uh, when I'm holding down Control. So right now I have not let go of my mouse. I still have my click pushed down on my mouse. If I hold down Control on my, on my, uh, on my keyboard and then let go of the mouse before I let go of Control, it inserts that and shoves everything else over. So I'm going to undo that, but that's, how, that's a pretty quick, simple way of doing that. You can grab this, drag it over, hold down Control, as you see those arrows pop up and let go of the mouse, not letting go of control, and now I can let go of control. All right, let's say we want to swap two clips. Let's say we want to grab this clip and move it here and this clip there. Uh, rather than kind of grab this and have to like make a big space and like this, like I'd have to do all tracks forward by hitting letter A, move this space out, grab this clip, move it over, grab this clip, drag it over here like that. And then hit this uh, space there, hit delete, hit the space, hit delete. I just swapped those, and that took a, took a little bit of time and some doing. So I'm going to undo all that, and I'll show you a quicker, easier way. So if we're going to swap these, I'm going to grab this clip right here. I'm going to drag it to the left over to this area right here where I want to swap it. Get it uh, snapped up to that edit point right there. I'm going to hold down Alt, Control, and it brings up this little icon right here. And this would be Option, Command on a Mac, and brings up this little swap icon. So right there, once again, Alt, Control, and then I'm going to let go of my mouse before I let go of the keys, and I, and it just swapped those two, and now I can let go of the keys. So Control Alt would do that when you grab a clip. Uh, if I grab a clip, and you can even actually hold down the keys before you do that. I'm holding down Control and Alt right now. I grab this clip and drag it over, and it brings up that swap icon, and I get exactly where I want to swap. I, I can even swap it with uh, something over here. Let go. It just swapped those thing, two items on the on the timeline. All right, last thing I want to show is how to move a clip, especially if you're moving a ways down the timeline and you don't want to have to move, drag a clip all the way down and try to get it to bump over. If I grab this clip and we were on to put this at the beginning, you have to sit here and do this and bump it over. See, and that's not even getting it. And see, that I can't access that at the beginning of the timeline there. So a uh, way of doing that, let's say we want to grab this clip and put it at the beginning of the timeline. I'm going to get my playhead over this clip here. I'm going to do arrows up and down until I get to the clip that I want. There it is. Hit the letter D to select. I'm going to hit Control X. Now X is a cut. You got X, C, and V like in a word processor. You got cut, copy, and paste. So I'm going to hold down Control and do X. Cut will cut the clip out of the timeline, but now it's holding it in the air on, on the uh, on what they call a clipboard, waiting to paste that somewhere on your timeline. So now I have to just hit. Uh, I can hit arrow up and, and jump to it, or I can just hit home if I'm going to the beginning of my timeline. And uh, now I'm at the very beginning of my timeline. And let's say I want to place it here. Uh, so now I can do Control V as in Victor, remember X, C, and V, and it will paste it, but it overwrites everything in its path. So I'm going to undo that, and let's say I want to shove it in there and move everything down. You do Control Shift V, and it will do a ripple, and it will do a ripple paste. So Control Shift and the letter V, as in Victor, paste that and shoves everything else down. And those are some navigation features on your timeline. I mentioned in an earlier episode that you can do minus and plus at the top of the keyboard to zoom in, zoom out. And then you can hit your slash above the enter key, your backslash above the enter key, to show the entire timeline. So plus, minus, slash for the uh, to show your entire timeline. And that's some quick navigation features and some ways uh, to do a little bit more uh, adv advanced editing inside your time and cleaning up inside your timeline. Well, thanks for watching Chin Fat. And if you have any questions, please post them.